Hi, this is Tim Ackesy from Atlanta, and this podcast is dedicated to the concept of speed control, rate control, how fast a person talks, and how it coordinates with stuttering or an increased in fluency of speech. There's five major points I want to cover here. One is speech is a fine motor skill like sewing or playing the piano. Number two, experts say 200 or more things happen simultaneously during speech from the brain to commands to the speech cortex and breathing and all those kinds of things. So it's very sophisticated. Number three, speech requires coordination and precision as we articulate and enunciate. Number four, I invite you to look at, if you're a person who stutters, you treat stuttering, look at speech as kind of like a road with speed humps in close proximity. I stuttered severely through undergraduate school, and I learned a semblance of controlling my speed to coordinate the other goals I had when talking. Fifth is, what is your goal? Or if you're an SLP, what is the goals that you have for your clients? Because that will dictate a lot of how important this is to you. Let's come back to the reality that speech is a fine motor skill. I mentioned sewing, piano, crochet, texting. Each of these has a speed threshold. Once you cross the speed threshold of a fine motor activity, you can no longer be accurate or precise. Again, come back to any keyboard, an organ, anything that's a fine motor activity, it has a speed speed threshold that cannot be exceeded. Now, after a long time, a pianist can become faster and still maintain accuracy. Someone who sews can be watching TV and doing their crochet while watching. My mom is one of them. But it comes back to the reality. Speech is a fine motor activity. Fine motor activities have a speed threshold. Think of a combination lock. As you turn the combination lock right, then left, then right again, when you come to the number, you have to be extremely precise. Otherwise, you have to start over again and again. Walking on a balance beam is a gross motor activity. It's easier for someone to master walking on a four inch beam than it is to maintain fluent speech. Number two, speech scientists say that as I am talking right now, about 200 things are all happening at once, which is pretty amazing. And remember above your left temple, you have the striatum, the speech cortex, It sends commands down to my tongue, lips, and voice as I'm talking. There's a feedback loop that is monitoring what I say. You know, if people have a stroke in the left part of their brain, it can really affect all of these areas, and I wouldn't be able to talk the way I am now. So there's a lot going on. The slower I talk, the better I can control those aspects, the commands from brain to articulators. Number three is that coordination and precision are necessary in speech production that's accurate. Think of your articulators, your tongue, lips, and vocal cords. As I'm speaking right now, I have to coordinate all those little muscle movements, coordinate my breathing, and I use something called phrasing. I have a concept taking something from mind to muscle. So there's a concept called phrasing. We learned that Joe Biden was taught it when he was a child. If you also listen to to Morgan Freeman, the great actor, or Barack Obama, I think that both of them use a tempo like I am now. And that tempo 
creates a persuasive speech pattern and it's very effective as an orator to switch into a phrasing tempo where you can accentuate and stress a key moment, a key word, a key concept. So phrasing, to pull off phrasing like a James Earl Jones or Morgan Freeman, one has to be in control of their rate. Now, I am not saying that everyone can talk like Morgan Freeman. I'm not saying I do. I am saying that if you want to speak in the neighborhood of those great speakers and have a pattern and a tempo, that's what's required. You have to have some rate control and speed control. Number four, anyone who stutters, I believe, can look at talking similar to a road that has speed humps in close proximity. When you're on a road with speed humps in close proximity, you maintain a miles per hour of about 10, maybe 15, because you're about to hit a speed hump. And to transition over the speed hump in your vehicle, you want that reduced speed for your shock absorbers and the undercarriage of your car and everyone in your car. So if I am maintaining a rate of speech similar to a road of speed humps and I c come to a stutter, I will feel the stutter better if my download speed from brain to mouth is more like phone dial-up. For those of you who remember when the internet was phone dial-up, instead of high-speed internet, DSL, or fiber. If I'm trying to talk as fast as I can, when I come to a stutter, I'm not going to be able to coordinate my articulators. I personally, on my journey with stuttering, found it to be a great challenge and investigation for myself how I could make adjustments to minimize my struggle. I did not like blocking. I did not like when I would have a tight repetition. My head would go down. Sometimes I would spit. I did not like it. I frequently was teased over it. So by learning a semblance of control, there was less attention to my speech. Anyways, rate control also allows someone to feel stutters and stutter more easily. I think that's a goal for anyone, to stutter more easily. Number five, what is your personal goal if you stutter? If you're an SLP who treats stuttering, what tends to be in your goal template for people who stutter? I was in a discussion group not long ago, and an author said, you should never touch the rate of speech. That um, just let people talk as fast as they can and, you know, just... And it doesn't make any sense to me because speech is a fine motor task. We're speech pathologists and coordination and precision of articulators has a speed threshold and requires some semblance of rate control, speed control. Other people say we're not supposed to try to control stuttering at all. That's a personal decision. I will not, there's an expression, the map is not the territory. I would never, as an SLP, tell my whole caseload you should not try to control your stuttering at all. If someone says they would like to minimize their struggle to control the severity of their stuttering, I'm going to ask a lot of questions and find out what their goals are, how they feel about their current stuttering and what we can do together because they're asking me to minimize the severity of their stuttering, assist them in doing so because I can't do it for them. So we want to avoid black and white statements, such as, you're not supposed to control stuttering at all. 
I think everyone agrees that we want to stutter more easily. We want less tension in our lips, tongue, and voice. Less secondary symptoms of struggle and fighting. The only way to stutter more easily is to slow down during the stutter. You cannot stutter more easily if you maintain a rapid speed or accelerate at the moment of the stutter. And a lot of people who stutter, when they come to the stutter, they might make a mistake by taking a breath and then pushing the word to get it over with. Come back to the metaphor of the speed hump. When you come to a speed hump, you do not accelerate or it's violent. When you come to a stutter, you reduce your rate to loosen the muscles of speech to accomplish something called stuttering more easily. So anyone listening who believes that you would want to stutter more easily or your clients would want to stutter more easily, rate control in the moment of stuttering is sine qua non. It's essential in Latin. You have to have one to have the other. You have to apply the brakes to stutter more easily in the moment of stuttering. Maybe you have a goal of eye contact. I feel a huge stutter coming. I used to look away. I'm going to slow down in what I call look and let it out. I'm going to look at my listener and ease the word out. Remember when that stutter comes, start the word on an exhale. If you inhale before the stutter, you're at risk for fueling the big stutter that you're trying to minimize. So, people who stutter, let's honor their goals. And SLPs who work with them, let's find out what their goals are. We want to avoid black and white thinking that rate should not be touched, control is a bad thing. People who stutter may be, you know, teased, bullied, humiliated, un uncomfortable in a meeting, in an internet chat appointment, being asked to be on, on jury duty, who knows? And they may have a goal of being able to minimize their physical struggle and feel better. And to stutter more easily, rate control is essential. Anything else would be nonsense. So in summary, speech is a highly sophisticated fine motor skill that requires perhaps 200 different actions inside your mind and body. It requires precision and coordination. To learn phrasing to speak, like a Morgan Freeman or your favorite news actor, news anchor, sorry, you have to have some rate control. Think of, if you're a person who stutters, think of talking as a road to speed humps. That way you're prepared to transition over speed humps and loosen up. And let's work with goals if somebody comes to us with a goal for rate. As I'm talking now, I'm maintaining a pretty steady rate. I can accelerate from time to time. My speech is more now like a car with a stick shift. I can go up to six with a six speed transmission and I can come back down to second gear like when you're going down a mountain and you put your car into second for the engine compression. That's how I talk. I spend most of my time down in second and third gear so that if I have to make any adjustments on a particular word or sound, I can easily treat it like a speed hump. I wish you well. Thank you for listening.